November the 5th, 2025. Guys, we've been having a lot of solar activity lately, and some people are blaming it on uh, the 3 I Atlas, but I don't think it's that because if you look at this diagram right here, you've got the sun here, the earth here, and this is Stereo B satellite. And the Atlas is in this area right there. So could be other things that exciting the sun. It's an electric universe, but I don't think Atlas is in this case. But what's happened, this third eruption today is going to cross our planet. Now, in, as we go through there, I won't stop it yet, but I'll tell you exactly when it happens. And that is at midnight on the 7th. Boom, right there. And what that is is universal time. So come back about five hours. And if you look, it'll be about 7 p.m. tomorrow night on the east coast of the U.S. That would be... Again, you take the midnight in UTC time and come back five hours, and that's what you're having. Now, what's interesting about this, it's a brick wall impact. See that? Now, it's not that big of a CME, and it's actually caused by an M7.4, not an X flare. And what's going to happen, you're going to see the solar wind be, will be coming down from some of the kind of outer impacts but it's going to be dropping to about average, which is about 320 kilometers per second. It'll be under 400 here. Then a brick wall kicking it up to about 500 kilometers per second increase to over 800 kilometers per second. And you're well over a million miles per hour at that point. Now, the main, big thing about this, because it is a brick wall impact, I'd say tomorrow night around 7 p.m. on the East Coast, you would want to be looking for a possible... Um, earthquake impacts simply because of that. Now, other than that, we would be seeing the normal geomagnetic storm um, results. Dizziness, fatigue, you can have problems with your heart, you can feel like crap when this starts to happen. But that's going to be coming in fast. Now, again, it's just, you've got about three, there's one, two, three, on the third CME, right there, the center of it looks like, and which is the black area, is going to make a pretty good impact with our planet. So again, tomorrow will be the 6th, and then you go into midnight, back that up about five hours again, let's say 7 p.m. on the East Coast impact time. Now that's going to tell you that the East Coast will not be directly Earth-facing. It will be more like the West Coast and over towards Hawaii through the Aleutians because of the way that you got an earth facing and sun facing side interacting with each other. So by seven, you won't be directly in the impact area as far as the East Coast. Still need to keep an eye on it. Now, update that's coming in from Space Weather, 1830 UTC time, just coming out, guys, is that this is going to cause a G3 magnetic, geomagnetic storm, which is very powerful. And so that's really going to intensify, guys, that dizziness, the headaches, the fatigue, the joint ache, and again, heart arrhythmias, arrhythmias and stuff like that. And they're saying a strong geomagnetic magnetic storm is predicted. The sun hurled another CME toward Earth today. This one looks like it will be a direct hit. The M7.5 class, which is just under next, the explosion from sunspot 4274 has an unambiguous Earth-directed component. In total, three, MC, three CMEs will graze or hit Earth in the days ahead, number one, two, and three. As a result, strong G3-class geomagnetic storms are possible on November 6th. That's tomorrow through the 8th after that impact. It says solar activity is rising. Suddenly, the sun is very active. Yesterday, Earth-orbiting satellites detected two powerful X-solar flares this inter interest compressed movie from NASA Solar Dynamics Observatory, the SDO, shows both, and that's what we're looking at here. Now, these did not have a direct Earth-facing component because they were going out the side. But anytime you see X flares that you can see the X in like this, you're going to have radio blackouts on Earth. No other way around it. Interference with the Internet, you may have experienced some of that but two powerful flares. Now, the sunspots will be Earth turning all for the, really for the next 10 days or so. 
and we really have four groups. You've got 4273 right here, which is almost directly Earth facing, and it's below the equator of the sun, which the Earth is also. But the big problems are coming from 4274 in this area, 4275, and one flare that's not quite showing up that we saw that second X flare come from in the article just before this. 4267 is moving out to around the right rim. Now it takes about 27 days or so for these sunspots to come back around the earth, excuse me, around the sun if they survive that long. And we've seen them survive and strengthen on many loops. Now another thing that we've got going on is this coronal opening that's directly earth facing and it's an opening in the canopy or the magnetic canopy of our sun. You can see the loops in these areas and as energy is released from the sun, it's caught up in these loops, transferred back down into the sun, kind of self-feeding itself. But in this case, without that canopy, it's like a clear day with no clouds, you're getting a direct solar wind towards our planet. So you're gonna have the increased solar pressure from the CMEs and an increased wind speed from this opening in the sun itself. And this goes back three days. And anything over this line right there, you can see where it says 10 minus 4, that's the next flare. Then we get the M74 was right there. Now, we just had a flare that in the last few moments peaked. When I first looked over here a moment ago, it had not stopped rising. So this tipped out right as the next flare that we haven't seen on camera yet. And again, we have... Uh, I don't think Atlas is causing this, it's on the opposite side of the sun, but we do have other comets around that will uh, can electrically charge and discharge. It's like the sun is a negative charge, the comets that are passing through space have a positive charge, and you see those CMEs kick back and forth between them because of that. Now, I, you saw the images that we broke down from the thermal images of a Dobsonian power, and it showed what appears to be a fleet of space craft. Some are very clear, but you've got so much hype going on by the so-called knowledgeable people about these events and that it's being so polluted, you can't really tell what's going on. And one thing about it is I've told a few of them, you're always welcome to use my images, but the, on, only a few. Paul Begley will do it, but most of them won't do it. Uh, they would rather hold their narrative to be, it being some type of mystery object. Guys, there's no way you can make up what we're seeing in that object. You've seen it. It's a couple of videos back from here. It's there. So, again, uh, I've been through this in the last 12 years a couple of times where people didn't want to listen, and finally they start listening, and now it, then it becomes mainstream knowledge. So nothing new for me, I just want to let you know, guys, there's a lot of hype out there by some pretty big channels, and uh, it's a lot of it is total nonsense. You've seen what is there. When will NASA say anything, or will James Webb, or any of these so-called telescope experts that we have? You see it. You have seen what it is. We're going to look at it one more time. And this is that bottom section, guys, that I said looked like the outdrive. And it's definitely mechanical. It's, it's a long way away. It wasn't ex exactly the clearest image you could get, but it was a thermal imaging. So, uh, again, Dobsonian Power did it with his backyard thermal telescope and uh, showed a round circle. And as we dove into that circle, looking at the thermal sections of it and bringing up the heat as we took out the stars behind it, this is the image we saw. Again, this is just the bottom, which would be this section. Again, this is not zoomed in or anything. I just want to bring it out to where you can see the entire thing. We've got different objects that look very mechanical here. When you bring them up close, you'll see that in the other videos. And then I stand with this being a force field or either or both a force field and a um, cloaking shield to make it very hard to see what's inside it. But we got multiple objects and then probably some up in here that are not clear enough for us to see. Now this is the very faint thermal image after uh, Atlas had come around to the right of the sun. It was basically over Venus 
and uh, you saw this is what was in the center and that's what you're looking at this lower section here guys again uh is it looks like the two rear out drives possibly ion drives and then this uh surface that's more illuminated would be the out front it's moving to the right and that's where you're starting to see the blue and green glows from from this they're saying it's changing direction changing speed slightly which would make sense but if you bring it up or bring it up um this is what we highlighted right there and that goes back to the mechanical objects we saw share that with some of the people that continually talk about it all the time and really don't have a good image of anything and share these videos with them or this these images and ask them what they think either they'll be honest and say they don't know or they'll debunk it totally but you guys know me well enough to where if i tell you i pulled it up and that's what was left and you see the mechanics involved you can trust that because that's more important to me than anything we're watching it guys you watch it it's a heads up be safe